All right, let's get straight to it. The modern mobile device, it's not just another endpoint anymore, is it? No, it's become the fundamental trust anchor for pretty much our entire digital identity. And as its role has gotten bigger, well, so have the threats. We're now moving way beyond just simple application layer bugs. We're talking about a whole new battlefield, one where the core identity of the device itself is the primary target for some really sophisticated low-level attacks. So what does that really mean? Device cloning? It's the total compromise of a device's unique identifiers. And let's be clear, we're not talking about some rogue app you downloaded, no. This is an adversary creating a functional duplicate of the device's very identity. The goal? To intercept your communications, blow right past your security controls, and of course, commit fraud. It's a game changer. So here's our briefing for today. First, we'll talk about this new frontier. Then we'll dive into two key attack factors, ADB and SIM identity. After that, we'll pivot to the defense side with the MVT forensic framework, and then look at low-level control using PySIM. We'll wrap it all up by talking about what this all means for us as professionals, the mandate for real expertise. Okay, section one, the new frontier. We're going beyond the application layer here. Look, we're all operating in a landscape where the mobile device is the absolute root of trust. And you know who else knows that? The attackers. They're actively targeting the foundational identity of the device itself. Because if they can own that, they can bypass the very security controls we all rely on. Think about SMS-based MFA. The whole fight has moved down the stack, right into the core hardware and firmware. All right, let's get into our first attack vector, the Android debug bridge. We're talking direct device command and control. Now, ADB is obviously an essential tool for developers. We all know that. But when it's misconfigured and left exposed on a network, well, it's basically a wide open door. It provides a direct, unauthenticated path to shell access and gives an attacker complete C2 over the device. And the attack sequence for an exposed ADB service? It's brutally simple and just, well, effective. It all starts with basic network recon. You run an NMAP scan for port 5555. Find one? Great. Step two is you just connect to it. ADB connect. From there, you've got shell access. ADB shell. You're in. And the final step is just grabbing whatever you want. Data exfil using native commands like pull and push. It's that straightforward. And here's what that looks like in practice. This one single command. This is the reality of the threat. ADB pull slash SD card slash example dot TXT dot. That's it. You're copying a sensitive file right off the device's storage and onto the attacker's machine. You don't need some complex zero-day exploit chain. All you need is that one exposed port and a single native command. This gives you pretty much unrestricted ability to pull any data that the shell user has access to. Okay, now we're going to escalate things. Let's talk about a more insidious and frankly, a much more common threat, SIM identity theft. This is all about hijacking the core mobile identity. The SIM, you know, it's the anchor for the device's entire network identity. If you compromise that, you take over the victim's phone number. You're intercepting calls, SMS messages, and this is the real prize, all those second factor authentication codes. Now it is absolutely crucial that we distinguish between two different attacks here, SIM cloning and SIM swapping. They are not the same thing. SIM cloning, that's a technical attack. You're trying to duplicate the SIM identifiers, the IMSI, the key, onto a blank card. This is tough. It usually requires physical access or a major breach at the carrier. SIM swapping, on the other hand, that's all social engineering. The attacker just manipulates customer service into porting the number to a SIM they control. The outcome's similar, a number takeover, but the methods are fundamentally different, and that's critical for any investigation. All right, let's pivot to the defensive side of the house. We need to talk forensic response, specifically hunting with MVT for sophisticated spyware. When you suspect a really low-level compromise, think something on the level of Pegasus. Your typical consumer-grade tools just aren't going to cut it. That's where the Mobile Verification Toolkit, MVT, comes in. This is the professional's framework for hunting down these advanced indicators of compromise. And I want you to pay close attention to this quote because the positioning of MVT is critical. The Defensive Lab Agency is extremely clear here. This is not a tool for casual investigation. This isn't something you run for peace of mind. It's a complex forensic framework and it's designed for highly trained professionals. Why? Because interpreting its findings requires a deep, nuanced understanding of mobile forensics to avoid things like false positives or even corrupting the evidence. So how does MVT actually know what it's looking for? Well, its power comes from ingesting indicators of compromise through a standardized format, and that format is STIX2. 
Think of Styx2 as the machine-readable language for cyber threat intelligence. It allows all that great intel, malicious domains, file hashes, process names, to be programmatically applied to the forensic analysis of a device backup. This is literally how raw threat intel becomes actionable in a mobile investigation. And here's what a practical workflow actually looks like on the command line. An investigator is pointing the tool NVT iOS check backup at a fully decrypted iOS backup. They're feeding it a Styx2 file containing all the known IOCs, and then they're piping the output to a formal report path. This is what evidence-based professional digital forensics looks like in action. Okay, so moving beyond just reactive forensics, true mastery in this space really involves proactive, low-level interaction with the hardware itself. We're talking about programming the identity module, and this is where the Osmocom PySim toolset comes in. It's a Python-based suite that gives you direct read and write access to the SIM card's file system, giving an expert just an unparalleled level of control over that identity module. So let's look at the key parameters you're working with here. You've got the IMSI, the unique subscriber identity. You have the MCC and MNC, which define the home country and network. But most critically, you have the key and the OPC. These are the cryptographic keys that are essential for authenticating to the network. Let's be blunt. Control over these parameters is control over the subscriber's identity. And this is what the full command looks like to actually provision a card. The crucial point here is that with the right credentials, an expert can build a SIM identity entirely from the command line. This command is writing a specific IMSI, the network codes, and of course, the necessary cryptographic keys right to the card. This kind of capability is absolutely essential for things like network testing, deep security research, and validating mobile infrastructure. So this isn't just some academic exercise. This low-level tool connects directly to modern network security. Take SUIC the subscription concealed identifier. It's a critical privacy feature in 5G networks designed to stop subscriber tracking by encrypting the IMSI over the air. And how do you think you provision the necessary public keys onto the SIM to make that work? You use a tool exactly like PySIM. This is how next generation mobile privacy actually gets tested and validated. All right, let's tie all of this together. This is the mandate for real expertise and why just surface level knowledge is totally insufficient now. Everything we've looked at the attack vectors, the forensic frameworks, the low-level programming tools, it all points to a clear and really urgent trend in mobile security. The days of just running a simple antivirus scan and calling it a day, those are long, long over. So what's the big takeaway here? It's that the battlefield has fundamentally shifted. Mobile devices are now our core identity anchors. Attackers know this, and they are targeting low-level interfaces like ADB and identity modules like the SIM. This means effective defense requires specialized forensic frameworks like MVT, not just off-the-shelf scanners. And any proactive security research and validation demands deep, programmable control with tools like PySIM. Honestly, mastery of both the offensive and defensive low-level techniques isn't just a nice-to-have anymore. It's a professional mandate. And that really leaves us with one critical question. As the old network perimeter just dissolves and the trust anchor shifts squarely to mobile, you have to ask yourself, is your tool set, is your knowledge deep enough to defend this new identity battlefield? Because these low-level threats are only going to mature and proliferate. The battlefield is here now, and it demands an expertise that goes far, far beneath the surface.